Hey, this is Asaf Levavi from LinkedInRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, we're going to learn a finger style arrangement I made especially for you guys and girls of U2's With or Without You. This was purchased as a private lesson and donated for the channel for all of us to enjoy. So thank you very much, private student. I'm going to play it for you first and then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs right here on the screen. It goes like this. Enjoy. Okay, so this is basically the four chord song. You've got four chords, D, A, B minor, and G. Okay? D, A, B minor, and G. Throughout the song, the verse, the chorus, and the bridge, these chords, D, A, B minor, and G. You start with D, let's start with the verse. And you play the bass note, the D string, then the melody is the F-sharp note, two on the E string, three times. So you can play the chord whenever and however you like. You can arpeggiate it. You can play a block chord. Okay? You can combine the two. Okay? Arpeggiate and then play a block. Or any other way you can think of. You can strum it. Okay? You can add whatever you like, make your own arrangement of this. So, um, that's the first lick. Then A, and you play the bass note. Then the E string. Three on the second string. E string again. Then two on the E string. And when you play two on the E string, you bar for B minor. So you play the F sharp note again, but this time it's inside the B minor chord. Okay, it's uh, it precedes the chord. So D, and then A, and then B minor, and you start with the E string, and then the bass. And of course, the chord in any way you like, and then it's the E string three times again, the F sharp note. Okay, so it's the same lick as in the D chord. And then G, you play the bass, then you play the open E string, three on the second string, and then you play these two notes again. Okay, so it's E, D, E, D. The notes, I mean. So that's the first phrase, that's the first sentence. So D, A, B minor, G, and of 
course, you can harmonize with the rest of the chord. Um, no, that's a bad example. Let's try from the beginning. Okay, you can use the second string as a harmony. Then A. Okay, you can use the third string. Then B minor. You can play the chord. Again, the second string, the third string. Okay? Whatever sounds good to you. And then... Okay, you can use the third string as an example. Um, that's another G note. So... Okay? Um, and then it's three again. And just like the transition into the B minor chord, uh, you want this D note to exist inside a D chord because that's the next chord. So to make a smooth transition, you play, okay? You uh, make the transition into D before you play the three on the second string for the second time. Okay, just like from A to B minor. Now, there's another transition that you can make smoother, which is this. Okay? With the F sharp note uh, leading to the G chord, you can put your finger on the first string and then play the G bass with another finger. And that keeps the F sharp note ringing. Okay, so B minor. And the last F sharp note makes the transition into G. Okay, this is G major seven, but the ear doesn't uh, register an, an, uh, a major seven chord because, because that's a melody and the ear knows how to separate chords and melody if you play it right. Um, so this, even though it's technically a G major 7, it's still G in the context of the song. So you've got nothing to worry about playing a wrong chord, okay? Because this is the melody and this is the chord. So D, A, last note inside the B minor chord. Last note by itself, and you keep it ringing, and play the G bass note. And then, zero, three, zero, and then the last three is inside the D chord, so it will keep ringing when you play the D chord again. Okay, I hope uh, I made sense with that explanation. Uh, if I didn't, just rewind the video. All I mean is that you want the last note of the chord to ring into the next chord. Okay, that's basically what I was trying to convey. Alright, so um, that's the first line. And then, of course, you play the D bass again. And then... Second string twice on three. And then you, of course, you can harmonize with the third string. And then uh, it's five on the first string with your pinky. You can slide into it. And you bar the second fret for the A chord. Uh, up to the fourth string, you have the fifth string, the A string open for the A bass note, um, and you do the, of course you play the bass, you have the chord to use in any way you want, the next melody is this, two on the third string, which is inside the A chord, and then you put on the B minor chord with the rest of your fingers, and play four on the third string, and as you play it, you bar the entire second fret for the B bass note. Okay, so it's this. Okay? Five, bar it for A, play A, play the chord if you want, then two on the third string, four on the third string and you rebar the second fret for 
the B note on the A string. So, um, oh, and there's a last note as well, which is the F sharp note again, okay? The E string on two. So it's, the melody is, okay? So um, let's play it from the D. Um, I harmonized with the rest of the chord. I played the E string with the second and third strings as the harmony. So the second line, D, three, three on the second string, five, you can slide, you can not slide, A, and then two, four on the third string, two on the E string. And that's the verse. Now, um, you have G left, so you just play the G chord in any way you like. That's the first ending of the verse. Okay, the second ending is the beginning of the chorus. So you just play G afterwards. You play. Okay, any way you want, play the G chord. You can even strum it. then play the verse again. So let's play the verse. I'll play it twice, then we'll learn the second ending. D, A, B minor, G, D, A, B minor, G, then again. Then the second ending starts the chorus. G, and you play the bass, then 3-3-3 three, three, three on the second string. Open first string. Then you put on the rest of the D chord without the second finger on the first string to keep the E string ringing. And you play the D bass. Then you play two on the E string. Okay, with the chord if you want, so it's... Got it? G, the chord if you want. Then, 3-3-3, three, three, three. open E string, make the transition. Try not to touch the E string. Okay, you put the fingers down. Don't touch it like I just did. Okay, don't touch the E string. Then add the finger after you've played the bass. So, G... And then you have the bar to fill, however you want. Again, it's your arrangement, not mine. So uh, the next chord is A. Again, chord, then zero, zero, 002 on the E string. Then open E string again, and you put the B minor chord while not touching the E string. And then the bass, then three on the second string, you can bar it by then, okay? Uh, or you can keep the E string ringing, so it will have this. Or if you don't like this harmony, then just bar it and play the rest of the chord, the B minor chord. And you repeat that. That's it, that's the chorus. G. four times, you can play it two times, you can play it once and go back to the verse. Again, your arrangement. I'm just teaching you uh, the basic uh, harmony and melody. You make your own version of this. Um, should we go over this one last time? G, three, open E string, D, A, open E string, make the transition to B minor, Again and right. Okay, and again, 
Experiment with ways to play the chord. Strum, pick, block chord, arpeggiate, just the bass notes. See what fits your style. Um, then you have the you have the verse again, you have the chorus again, then you play the bridge. Now the bridge uh, is this. It's the same four chords again. Um, you're on B minor at the end there, or not. You're on C, or, no, you're C, you're on <laughs> G at the end there. Where did that C come from? Um, uh, okay, so. Okay, you're on G, and you play three, three on the second string. Then you play an open E string and then make the transition to D. You play the D bass. Then it's 3-3-0-0 three, three, zero, zero on the second string. And you make the transition into A. So this time you put on um, an A sus2 shape. Okay, when you make the transition into D, you put on a D sus2 shape. Okay, without anything on the E string. When you make the transition into A, you make a uh, uh, an A sus2 shape um, without anything on the B string because that's still ringing, that's your note. So D, A, and then you play the bass and the next melody note is 2 on the third string, okay? This note, so this is the melody. Bass first, then rest of the melody. Bass, bass. Okay, the bass notes are separate from the melody. And then it's the same thing only with B minor and G. So it's 3 3 on the second string, and then open E string, and you make the transition into B minor, and you play the bass. Then you play 3-3-0-0 three, three, zero, zero on the 2nd string. This time you play the G bass. And 2 on the 3rd string. It's the same melody. Okay? But this time with B as your bass and G as your bass. Okay? You can play the chord. You can play just the bass notes with the melody. Your choice. So, uh, the 2nd uh, phrase. the two. Then um, it's D and the transition is the same from the G to the D. It's 3-3 three, three on the second string, 0 on the E string. D chord, right? The D bass. And then it's the same thing. It's 3-3 three, three on the second string, open E string into A. Okay, into A. Again, you can arpeggiate the chord. And then the B minor and G lines are the same. Okay, the, exactly the same line as before. Okay, 330, 3300, three, zero, zero, 2. Okay, so you can say that you're playing. Uh, the full phrase on D and A, then the full phrase on B minor and G, then half a phrase on D, half a phrase on A, full phrase on B minor and G. Um, if that makes it easier for you to remember. Because it's basically the same phrase, it's this, then again, and then just half of it. And then the whole phrase again. Sometimes it makes it easier if you just um, make units out of the lines. Um, it helps some people remember. So that's the bridge. That's that's it. It's D, A, B minor. Again, you can harmonize.
harmonized. And then half of G, ah, uh, half of D, half of A, and then the full phrase again on B minor and G. And then uh, you've got the solo. The solo goes like this. You're on G, okay? Because you finished the line. And then... Kind of lame, I know, but uh, I'll play it better after we learn it. Um, you're still on G, so you play the bass again, and then you play open third string, three on the second string, and then again. Then you play seven and seven on the second and third strings. You can slide into it, and then D. Okay. And you've got the second and third strings to play with if you want, so... Okay? Then it's 8 on the second string and 10 on the first string. Um... Hmm... No, I'm missing one. It's three times. And then A... So it's three times. It's zero three zero three zero three. Okay, third string, second string, three times. Then seven seven on strings two and three. D and then A, just the bass. Eight nine on strings uh, two and one. Three times. Then. Uh, again, 7-7 seven, seven on strings 2 and 3. With the B bass, you can do it with your thumb, you can just bar the whole fret. 7 on the E bass string, that's the B bass. This is, a, after all, a B minor chord. So, okay, and you can put on a B minor chord and play with that, okay, with its bass notes. And then, again, the G bass. A. B, B minor. G. D. A. Okay. And uh, again, find your way to play this. There are many, many ways to interpret this line. Um, but that's basically how you do it. And before you go practice this, subscribe to my channel and go download the tab. The subscribe button is right below. The description is right below that. Uh, the link is in the description. Go download the tab from the website. It's for free. Everything is for free right here on Lick and Ref. And if you want to give something back, there's a donation button right above the tabs. Everything goes right back into Lick and Ref into working on these arrangements, these lessons, and filming them, editing them. It all takes time and effort. Um, of course, it's a lot of fun, but it takes a lot of work as well. So if you want to help out, I'd be more than grateful for your help and your donations. So I thank you in advance for it. And you go practice this. Make your own arrangement. Enjoy this. This is a beautiful song. And um, have fun. Have fun. Have fun. That's the most important thing, to have fun with your music. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very, very much for watching. Bye for now.